What is up, Steeler Nation? We are back for another great episode with a guy, man, love his stuff, pro football focus. We know we love everything that they're doing over there. But first, we want to talk about our new partnership with the one and only DraftKings. With the NFL season right around the corner, nonstop football action is in sight. You can go in on the action with DraftKings Sportsbooks, an official sports betting partner of the NFL right here. New customers can bet just $5 and score $200 in bonus bets instantly. You don't even have to wait. It's just in there. Nobody's missing out on the action this season. DraftKings customers can take advantage of two new offers every game day. Make sure you use our code SICK STEALERS. I know you got them parlays. You got everything going on. You know, your, your wife's probably, your girlfriend's already probably mad at you because you already got your setup. College football starting and NFL will be here. Make yourself some money, man. Yeah. Use our code. You went over for 2. You said wife and girlfriend. She's a fiance. You know that. But No, um, so I'm you're, saying you're I'm talking to our already. viewer. Oh, you're, okay, you're talking. Yes. Well, I thought you were talking directly to me. I no. guess that's how you know that I'm excited I'm talking for, to the for people, betting man. as I'm well. talking to the people. <laughs> I thought I've been thinking about what I'm going to put in all week, so I'm definitely going to use DraftKings. I'll throw out a quick pick before we get into everything. I like South Carolina Saturday. They're getting points against North Carolina, in-state rival. I'm going with the the SEC team. But yeah, when you're betting, life is more fun. Of course, we want you to download the DraftKings Sportsbook app before kickoff. Use six Steelers once more. You're going to get $200 in bonus bets instantly when you bet just five bucks on any bet. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code SICK. Steelers, the crown is yours. Must be 21 or older. Pennsylvania only. Only bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Terms you can find at Sportsbook dot draftkings dot com slash football terms all right jy now that i've i've uh, hopefully made people some money uh, yep. let's bring in somebody that we're really excited to talk to you like you said go ahead sammy roll it turn up your volume your volume because you're about to listen to the sick podcast Steelers crazy Harris Smith Shields Blacko Polamalu takes it home Super Bowl 43 Pittsburgh might be bound for that thanks to number 43 The sickest Pittsburgh Steelers podcast Sports entertainment like no other It's gonna be sick Our next guest here you can find him at Tampa Bay Trey on t- Twitter he is the lead draft analyst over at Pro Football Focus We're really excited to bring on Trevor Sikama. Trevor, what's up? Hey, guys. Appreciate you having me on the show. Thanks so much for Come joining on. us. Hey, I, recent promotion, right? Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. I was doing some uh, draft work for them over the last couple of years. But, um, yeah, the spot opened up, and we we, we needed a, a lead draft analyst. And um, I put my name in the hat because it's something that I absolutely love to do all year round. So, yes, got officially nice. named lead draft analyst, and I'm excited. So thank you very much. Awesome. It was Mike Renner who was who was the uh, the position. It was. It was indeed. And I love Mike, man. Mike has done such an incredible job laying the foundation of of what is really great draft coverage over at PFF. So just really excited, and a good friend of mine as well. So just really excited to continue that uh, great foundation that he's laid for PFF. Yeah, I'm sure he's so sick of it, but my girl and I are huge Bachelor and Bachelorette fans. So <laughs> anyway, we will, uh, <laughs> that's, I guess, for another topic. I'm not really, talk. but I was for that season because Mike was a prominent dude on Twitter and football Twitter. So when we all learned that a uh, uh, football Twitter person was joining The Bachelor, uh, we all had to watch it. So Incredible. Well, thank you for accepting our rose today. We're excited to take a deep dive into football. Obviously, uh, you've been involved, listen, in, in Tampa Bay sports for a long time. The first preseason game of the year, our Pittsburgh Steelers uh, went down to Tampa, of course, got that victory. I'm assuming that you were a full participant in that game. What, what were some of your takeaways? Yeah, I mean, so I, I, I love, first and foremost, I love that they're getting, um, um, oh my goodness, Broderick Jones, the offensive there tackle there. I, yeah, I love sure. that they're getting Broderick Jones the early work. He actually had the most snaps of any offensive player throughout the entire preseason. Well, I should say first round player. And man, I just love that he was able to get out there and get that experience because he is somebody who has a super high athletic ceiling, but you knew it was probably going to take him a little bit of time. And Georgia, of course, I think they play in the SEC, but Georgia's caliber of football was so much higher than a lot of the competition that he went up against. So really, even even in the best conference, I think, in America, in the SEC, you only get like 
three, four, five, maybe if you get into the college football playoff, true test where you go, okay, you're going up against a future NFLer. So, you know, he only had a handful of those last year as a first time starter. So I was excited to see him get that early action, um, a statement, I think a testament to what they think of him and what he could be as a starter. So that was good to me. I really wanted to see that. And that was just kind of some of the early things that I was looking at. Of course, Nick Herbig as well, looking like an absolute monster, but uh, yeah, I think that was the big one that stood out to me. What was kind of the report on Broderick coming out? I know you just talked about it to a degree. It sounds like raw, but was there something specifically that caught your eye in terms of, all right, Broderick Jones needs to work on this to become an elite left tackle in the NFL? Yeah, so everybody kind of goes to this one, but it is something that's really important. You know, just like hand placement, hand timing, and anticipation. Like the more you see, the more you're able to get it. And a, a thing that I continually write down with players, especially at this time of year when it comes to summer scouting, is the difference between anticipating and reacting. Now, a lot of guys, especially when they're underclassmen, they're simply reacting like, OK, this guy put this move on me. And normally the best ones have the athleticism to still be able to deal with it. But the guys who you really love going into an NFL draft are the ones that have already proven they're anticipating those moves. They know the left hand's coming up before the left hand even comes up. They know the ball's coming to them even before the ball's coming to them, or they know a wide receiver is going to break before they even do it. And so those are the guys that it's really easy to say, yeah, hundred percent. I know that they're going to be a stud at the NFL level when you combine that with their athletic profile. And Broderick was kind of one of those players where he gave you all you wanted as an athlete, man. I thought the, the feet moved really well. I loved how low he could get in his stance. I mean, there's just not many big dudes to play offensive tackle that can truly get the wide base that he has that sink his hips all the way. So he's really like sitting down before the ball is even snapped. And that just gives you so much great leverage pad level, of course, and strength that you can call upon from your lower body. So all of that was there for Broderick. It was just a matter of there were a handful of times where guys who had a little bit better of a pass rush profile, a little bit better of a pass rush plan, they kind of gave him a little bit of bait and he would take it and then they, you know, fire off inside or attack the outside shoulder or hit, you know, swipe the hands away, whatever it was. And so just more snaps and more anticipation instead of reaction was really what I saw in him. But I had a first round label on him as I know a lot of people did as well. Yeah, Steeler fans are excited. The upside is certainly intriguing. I think you always have the higher ceiling guy, uh, you know, a little bit more excitement in, in Pittsburgh for a guy opposed to, you know, the higher floor. Hey, uh, you, you mentioned Nick Herbig. He, he's a steal. We, of course, over here also think Joey Porter Jr. was a big time steal. To get a guy like that in the second round, what was your uh, initial thoughts on that? Yeah, I'm going to tell you, uh, you could go down the Steelers' entire draft class, and i basically say that every player is a steal. This was, yeah. I think, my number one draft class, if not tied for my favorite. We gave them an A-plus grade in my draft podcast that we have, the NFL Stock Exchange. So I absolutely love the Steelers' class. And, you know, when it comes to Joey Porter Jr., I thought he, that he was picked appropriately. I really do. You know, some people talked about JPJ as, like, a top 15 overall pick, you know, maybe CB one, you know, better than Christian Gonzalez or better than Devon Witherspoon. I wasn't there, but that doesn't mean that I'd be any less excited about, especially where the Steelers got him because he does give you a really nice athletic profile. He's got that long body to him. Obviously the NFL background, he's been training to be a pro for a long, long time. The pros and cons with him. I kind of mentioned some of the pros, the cons are, all right, so when guys get the better of them, if they're a little bit more athletic, if they really challenge how quickly he can flip his hips and get up field with them, sometimes he gets a little bit too grabby. You know, those long arms in high school football and college football, I think it's a little bit easier to get away with those things where in the NFL level, because these guys are so talented that you're going up against, if you start grabbing, they'll make it really look like you're grabbing and you'll get the flags against you. So that's the thing that I think the monitor first and second year with JPJ, but like he has – that size, that IQ, that anticipation, the background to be a CB1 at the NFL level. And so, yeah, I thought that he got picked appropriately as a, you know, early second round pick. I thought like late first, early second was a really good sweet spot for him. You get him on the tail end of that. I think that's really good value. So glad he got that preseason interception too. So people can stop talking about that as well. The, yeah, the, that no, was big, no, no. That I was, was a big thing here in Pittsburgh. They're like, you only had this many. I'm like, it's... See, but I felt like he was a big forced and completion guy, right? And yeah. something that we have over at PFF is, one, we have a ton of data that you can you can hone in on just exact situations. Like, if I wanted to search for Joey Porter Jr., 
coverage plays on the outside where he was in single coverage, press coverage. It was a third down situation, and there was more than seven yards to gain. Boom. I could see all the plays in which Joey Porter Jr. and how he performed in that area. So because we have so many different ways that we can slice up the data, we have things that are more stable or unstable grades when it comes to projection from college to the NFL level. Interceptions are very unstable. It's just, yeah, okay, certainly they can signal ball skills and they can be a good tool at times, but not every interception, you guys know this, not every interception is the same. Some of them are very much luck. Sometimes the ball just bounces and you're right under it and you grab it and you can say, okay, right place, right time. And sometimes but- you're playing Dak Prescott. <laughs> All right, you said that. I did not. Just for, just let the <laughs> record it. show. But forced incompletion. So either pass breakups or you make a play on the wide receiver to where he's not able to catch the ball. Forced incompletions are so much more stable of a stat because they are things that if you get a high number of forced incompletions, that is something that is typically very replicable, even jumping from college to the NFL level. So Joey Porter Jr., where – maybe didn't have the volume of takeaways that you would want to see from a corner. He certainly had those plays on the ball. So those forced incompletions, that's never something that really worried me. I figured that he'd get that in the NFL. Yeah. So let's talk about another quarterback, Kenny Pickett. What to you is his ceiling? I love Kenny, man. I've had the opportunity now to interview Kenny twice. I I interviewed him at the beginning of his final season in Pittsburgh when he was sort of just like starting to catch fire, but it was really before he became, uh, you know, absolutely went nuclear that season. Uh, And then I had the chance to chat with him again um, after his rookie season in the NFL. And so every time they've had the chance to talk to him, I mean, the dude just gets it. I I understand so much why the Steelers loved him, why they drafted him where they did, why the team's going to rally around him, why he was the starting quarterback for them so early. I just love the mental makeup of this dude. And, you know, I, I, I'm not going to lie. I questioned, the arm strength going into the NFL. I I wondered if it was going to be something that was really going to hinder him, but it doesn't seem like it. Can he hit throws like Josh Allen can? No. Okay. But that does like, it doesn't have to be that, you know, you don't, you don't have to see an alien type arm strength, like with Josh Allen or Anthony Richardson or Will Levis to be a good quarterback at the NFL level. And I think that Pickett's really showing that, man. I mean, Burrow is a perfect example, right? Burrow Mm -hmm. is somebody who couldn't live off of just arm talent, and you saw that early on in his college career. But going back to the reaction versus anticipation, when you become an assassin between the ears, you could play this position really well. And I think that Kenny really started to play it well in the second half of last season, and I think that he is going to take that next step this year. It's why I have the Steelers as one of my playoff teams from that division. Yeah, that, that kind of just went into my next question. Plenty of the national media now is uh, jumping on, you know, the Steelers bandwagon. Do you realistically, I, I personally do, and I'm not even being a homer, being from Pittsburgh, I think that they have a legitimate chance to win the AFC North this year. Yeah, I, I think that, unfortunately for them, I think all four teams have a pretty decent Yeah, I, I agree. I think, it's, I think it's the toughest division in football this year. And, you know, it's, it's the toughest division in football in also the much tougher conference in football. So that Mm. makes it really difficult, right? I think one week you could be the number one overall seed, and then two weeks later, if you drop two games, you might not even be in the playoffs. I think that's how close this conference is going to be. But you you look at Pickett, and I think he's going to take that next step. Uh, Love the pass catchers, obviously. I was a big George Pickens guy. I had him wide receiver three or four. I can't remember going into the draft. Uh, even in that studded class. So him, Deontay, obviously, I think that they're going to play well. And the defense, man, those veterans on the defense are still playing at a high level. You know, Cam Hayward, TJ Watt. I think TJ Watt was my pick to win defensive player of the year this upcoming year. I think that he is pissed off to come back and be fully healthy and really wreak havoc this year. So you get a little bit better in the secondary as well. Love the Keanu Benton edition. Love the Nick Herbig edition. Uh, I think that Darnell Washington is certainly going to get some play on the offense as well. Let them go heavy personnel a lot more to help out that offensive line. And so for those reasons, and then of course you wrap it up with a bow with Mike Tomlin, who is one of my favorite coaches in the NFL has been for a long, long time. I think that that has to, to me, spell out a team with a really high floor, as all Tomlin teams have. But now you are increasing the ceiling above what we had last year. So that's why I project them to even a really tough division uh, come out as one of those playoff teams. 
We're hanging out with Trevor Sikama here on the Sick Podcast Steelers. Crazy. He is pro football focused lead draft analyst. And listen, you're you're a football nerd like us. We got a lot of football nerds who watch the program. So we we had to bring you on and talk draft. We could not not talk draft, even 2024. Let's let's skip to 2028 at this point. Who cares? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, it, college football's here. We're, we're all excited. You know, I think most people know about the Drake Mays and Caleb Williams of the world. Uh, Kool Aid McKinstry, my favorite name of all time, out there. Who are some some guys this weekend? Maybe you might be watching that are kind of under the radar right now. Maybe maybe in the you know latter half of that first round. Yeah. So I'll say, you know, I'll, I'll start by saying this to to give it a good a week one preview for college football. LSU plays. Florida State this upcoming weekend. They actually play on a Sunday. There's no NFL action this Sunday. So it, it, I think all, all eyeballs are going to be on them. There's three receivers in this game that are all top 30 on my preseason big board. And that is um, Malik Neighbors, the wide receiver from LSU, who I have as a top 15 grade. I think he is phenomenal. One of the best natural wide receivers in the country. Keon he can't Cole. go all Keishon Butte on us. For no, I don't. I don't he think he. I don't think okay. he's going to go Keishon Butte. And uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I wasn't even the biggest fan of Keishon Butte even before he really started to fall nice. off. So, um, so I don't think that's going to ever happen to Malik Neighbors. If it does, you guys are the curse for bringing that up. I'm going to come back yeah. on this podcast and be mad at you because I like this prospect a lot. So he's obviously great. But then in Florida State, they've got two wide receivers, Keon Coleman. He's coming over from Michigan State. I mean. The dude is massive. I, he is, I think, six foot three, 215, 220 pounds. He looks the part of all of it. You watch, I think it's that Penn State game, and he has some contested catches where you go, are you an all-pro NFL receiver who just, like, put on a Michigan State helmet? Like, what's going on here? So the athletic profile of his game is insane. Now he gets Jordan Travis, Heisman Trophy candidate at quarterback for Florida State, throwing him the ball. And then the other guy is Johnny Wilson, the wide receiver from Florida State. Six foot seven. Uh, I believe he's 235, 240 pounds, something wow. like that. And Jesus. he's got he's got tight end measurables, but he moves so much better than that. And that's why he's playing at wide receiver. They truly unlocked what he was able to do in last year's um offense at Florida State. So those three guys, I mean, there's there's guys, there's so many to name. Uh this draft class, I'll just say it like this. I ranked 150 of these guys going into the season. So if you go over to pff.com, I've got a ranking of the top 150 draft eligible prospects going into the year. There's guys outside of my top 100 right now that I would easily have in the top 75 of previous year's draft classes. Like that's how loaded this class is at so many different positions. So, you know, you ask me like, who's a couple of guys that sleepers in the first round Dude, I could name you 60 players that, that could all be potential first rounders at this point. So it is truly those are those are three wide receivers that I know everybody likes the points, everybody likes the fun, the receivers. So that's mm-hmm. a good matchup to watch. But man, there's so many other guys to name. So we, before we get you out of here, just wanted to, you know, get your take. Who, who wins the Super Bowl this year? <sighs> Give us maybe a couple teams if, if you yeah. don't have the so final prediction afc and nfc we'll do that there you go who did i have as my i think i had bills eagles as my super bowl matchup when i submitted it for pff um is it too early to give the winner yeah but i mean like i kind of either either team would be fun but honestly like i'll 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 say the bills just because i want to talk about the bills Mm. i think people have buffalo bills fatigue I think the Bills have been one of the most talented rosters in the NFL over the last two to three years. Yeah. And because the ball didn't really bounce their way to the point where they could even get to the Super Bowl win an AFC championship, I think people were just like, oh, yeah, that team, they can't get it done. Like, like we're writing them off. They're going to be good. You know, they'll win double-digit games, but we're not worried about it. You should still be worried about the Buffalo Bills. I, I really still think that this team is very talented. I think that uh, James Cook's going to be great out of the backfield for them. Dalton Kincaid's going to be a great option for them as a second tight end and a main receiving tight end. Gabe Davis is going to have a bounce back year uh, at, at wide receiver. They get Tredavious bat, White back for a full season at cornerback. I still think that that team is going to be fantastic. And so I'm kind of picking the Bills almost a little bit just because I want people to remember that this is an actual force, but there's so many teams in the AFC could do it. I mean, it'd be silly not to mention the Chiefs. I think and whoever comes out of that um, – that AFC North is going to have a chance to really compete for an AFC championship. NFC is a little bit different. 
Eagles are, I think, the obvious. Mm-hmm. I I think the Cowboys are so volatile. I don't I don't really expect them to win the three or four games in the playoffs it takes to get to the Super Bowl. Giants, I might have maybe have a little bit more faith in, but I wonder if they have the top ten, the top offensive talent. I like the Lions a lot. Do the Lions have the top offensive talent to be able to do it in in the playoffs? I wonder that, but I think they're going to be a force. Not really worried about any of the teams for the South, although I think the Saints are going to be the best. I'm much lower on the San Francisco 49ers than I think everybody else is, but that's because I'm much lower on Brock Purdy. Maybe that's just me as a draft analyst still talking, but the guy was Mr. Irrelevant and is coming off UCL surgery. Like I, it's it's basically like Tommy John surgery for a guy in his throwing hand. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about that. So I think the Eagles to me, clear cut the team to beat in the NFC. So I'll say Bills, Eagles and as a, as a Super Bowl pick and then, I'll say I'll say the Buffalo Bills. Why not? Okay. I was gonna say we can have you back on closer, you know, to the Super Bowl, and you can give your <laughs> give your one there. But uh, it's cheating. You, you said it, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we, we can really do both. appreciate. It. We can yeah. do both. Yeah. We can do we'll both. Do it. Be awesome. Hey, we really appreciate you coming on, and just tell everyone, our viewers, where they can find you and your workout. Sure. Uh, PFF.com is where you can find all of our uh, draft analysts that will or draft analysis that we will be doing throughout the season, and then uh, after your listeners finish listening to this wonderful podcast if they want to come and listen to the nfl stock exchange podcast with myself and connor rogers we're covering the nfl draft 365 so anytime you guys want to dip your toe into draft season uh we got you come over and hang out we got time time. it's labor day weekend it's 20 podcast time come on now it's we got we got plenty of time i appreciate it thanks man yeah thanks guys anytime thank you you know what? For me, it's never too early to talk draft. I'm a complete we, drafter. So I, I knew, I knew it like that, that you couldn't wait. I knew it. You <laughs> probably already Florida started State your mock receiver. draft. Wilson is like Darnell Washington out there. Are you I, kidding me, Johnny Wilson? I was, six, I was seven, thinking the same thing. Something of that nature. Uh, oh, my goodness gracious. It's six seven two thirty five. That is absolutely ridiculous. Hopefully it doesn't turn into like the next Calvin Benjamin. But uh, anyway, I, I want to talk about something really, really important. And that is the why on top of our hats right now, Jordan. We want to mention, of course, uh, just an awesome sponsor of ours. My family came in excited. It's sick. Shopians.com right here. It's a great sponsor of the Sick Podcast Steelers. Crazy. Just had a giveaway winner. Dylan Stamper won a hat. He is absolutely so excited. He was all over social media posting about it because they're the number one brand for Pittsburgh sports. Finally, you have the number one brand to rep all black and gold. I mean, this is so so sick. I mean, it fits the theme of the show. Use our code SICK15 for 15% off your entire purchase, Yens, at shopyens.com. No minimum purchase necessary. That is so huge. Get on there. Get yourself a Shopyens koozie or something, man. Get something for the season. Stay this Y logo is a little different yeah. than what you usually see. So, I like it. Uh, Yenzers, unite. And then after that, after you get your hat, make sure you stop down, get you a cup of joe it brushes and show beans. it off show off that in public. caffeinate and create brushes and beans cafe visit them at 4550 william penn highway in murraysville like i said i always like to get the double shot espresso to start my day go see mark over there tell him that the sick podcast Steeler crazy sent you we have some big announcements coming up getting you ready for the season what way to start your day and it brushes and beans cafe william penn highway in murraysville Mm-mm-mm. Like I said last time, it's a perfect day. Wake I up could... for a Steeler game, get some coffee, get a shop, put your shop yins gear on, and then get on DraftKings and play some bets. It's literally like what I do in the morning anyway for every Steeler game. It's what everybody does. And then do your research on Pro Football Focus, our guys over there. Damn Shout right. out to Damn Trevor right. and Sam. So, yeah, nice smile. We're hopefully we'll be smiling week one when the Steelers beat the 49ers. And we will see you. We will see you guys next week for a very, very, very special episode. So make sure you subscribe. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Hashtag running backs matter. Yes. Running backs matter. Hashtag bring it back. Bring it back. We're taking it straight to the house, Sammy. Till next week. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast Steelers Crazy on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.